I'm here to tell you a little bit about myself. Why monsters? I, I kind of like the fact that you, there's no realm that you have to stay in. A human is a human is a human. And even to a certain effect, there's only so much you can do with a zombie. Um, monsters, it seems like an endless trough of hell that you can pull from and create, you know, scary stuff. And that's why I dig it. Monsters are people too. You know, they, they just want love. So did I have any mentoring along the way? No, I, uh, I pretty much uh, had to refer to books and then that was prior to the internet. Um, oh God, I can't believe I just said that. I'm a before internet child. Once the internet came along, there were tutorials and things like that that I could look up. Way more information available than it was when I was in high school. Um, we barely had computers and uh, so there was like no information. Uh, and I was from a small town. Um, I think we graduated with somewhere between 30 and 40 kids. I actually wanted to be a special effects person early on in my life. I mean, when I say early, I mean, we're talking Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood early because I saw an, uh, an episode, Mr. Rogers, where he took you behind the scenes, oddly enough, of uh, the, uh, the makeup that went into doing The Incredible Hulk. So I got to see them transform Lou Ferrigno from mild manner Lou Ferrigno <laughs> into The Incredible Hulk with all the makeup prosthetics. And I knew at that point that that was just something I really, really had to learn how to do. We've done a lot together, man. I mean... <laughs> I like to think it's okay. It's art. It's art. It's stuff. We do a lot of stuff. We do a lot of artistic awesome. stuff. set me apart from any other special effects artist it would you know there, there'd be a, a number of things uh, right off the top of my head I would think uh, I have a master's in literature I think it I think it gives me an edge on certain creature creations especially where um, where we're talking about the literary monster versus the Hollywood monster Mary Shelley's Frankenstein was uh, Frankenstein monster sorry was she described him very very well in the book and it looks nothing like the Hollywood version of Frankenstein with the flat head and the fact that he's all stiff and zombie like I mean this guy was agile he was intelligent I mean he was creepy looking he had long hair if, if I remember correctly the hair was actually quite um, Fabio-esque yeah. I don't know where they got uh... anyway so if you actually read the literature you'll learn about the monster my uh, color blindness. I often have I like, gone around the studio asking people, "Is this is this blue or is this purple or is is this a skin tone?" Because I, I really need to know if this is a skin tone. I'm about to start airbrushing something. I need to know if what I'm airbrushing is actually the color that I think it is, and not the color that I you know hope it is, or or some variation of that. Making people peek inside the little cap and say, yeah, 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 that, that, that's the right color. Because if anyone were to dare lie to me in my studio about what color is actually in there, I might come unspooled. If I had the chance to work with anybody in the special effects arena that has, you know, the filmography and obviously the experience that I don't have, you know, uh, it would have to be uh, any of the guys from Legacy or uh, the Stan Winston Studios. Uh, I think Bruce Mitchell's stuff is, is, is amazing and I would love to learn how to do some of the things that he does. And um, also uh, Steve Wang, um, he's incredibly detailed. Um, and then uh, like Alec Gillis and all those guys. So if like Steve Wang was one of the judges, or Alec Gillis was one of the judges, or Bruce Mitchell was one of the judges, um, and they broke, they broke I, You know what, I don't know how I'd react. I try to be a professional, because you know, when it all comes down to it, on the set you have to be a professional. Russ is out yelling at the cops. We don't know what's going on. Oh, he just hit him! Yeah. If that's what, you, if that's what, you know, if that was the main question, I would not beat one of my idols to a pulp. I might go after somebody near them just to make a point. That that that's all.
Just leave it in your childhood. Don't don't go back, and, you know, because when you go back, it's a disappointment. Like um, I love, all right, don't get me wrong, the Bruce Campbell movies, you know, the uh, the Evil Dead, Evil Dead Two, and you know, um, but I think they caught on to something when they realized that the first one was maybe not quite what they wanted. So they made the second one a little more funny, and then Army Army of Darkness was just straight up comedy, you know. And I I remember watching. Evil Dead 1 and being scared shitless, you know, because of that, that woman in the floor coming up and just and giggling and that, that wasn't cool. And then the one just giggling and rocking in the chair. Those things creeped me out. Don't go back. Don't ever go back. You know that you're going to have to wear a bulletproof vest because you just offended Bruce Campbell. Fans. I love Bruce Campbell, okay? I love... Make sure you edit that back in. No, they're haters. They're going to come after No, 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 no haters. <laughs> no haters. I said the movie wasn't as scary as it was. But I did say it was scary as hell when it was in my childhood.